Hi everyone, Corey here with Team Kramer Fishing, and this video is going to be a review of Shakespeare's Ugly Stick Light Pro, specifically the 7 foot medium powered version. Okay, I've had this rod for three or four years now, quite a while. It's gotten moderate use. It hasn't been my primary rod. And I would say up until this year, it hasn't even really been my secondary rod. For a couple years, I mostly used it for carp fishing um, and some catfishing almost exclusively. But this year, I wanted to give this rod a little bit more action and just use because it always seemed to work pretty well whenever whatever I wanted it to do. Um, for a while, I used it as um, a frogging rod, like for topwater frogs, for bass, and it worked pretty good for that, for the smaller um, frogs. And, um, and then I used it for carp fishing quite a bit because it has a really nice bend and action to it. Um, so let's go over some of the positive things about the rod first. Okay, so I think that this is a good looking rod, especially for an ugly stick. The colors that they chose, this kind of blue and gold um, with the black background, uh, it just looks really nice. I mean, it looks a lot nicer than the, the GX2s, which are the other rods that the other ugly sticks, I, I guess I have a couple other kinds too, but um, that I have. I also like the cork handle better than the foam handles. Um, that's just kind of a personal preference. Um, the other thing that this has going for it that the GX2s don't is that it's a lot lighter than the GX2s. Um, I have a seven foot GX2. That one's actually medium heavy, so it's a little bit beefier than this, but it's much heavier. Um, this is actually a graphite rod. I wanna say the Ugly Stick mixes fiberglass and graphite for these rods, but unfortunately, I don't see them for sale anymore, um, which is probably why I haven't done a review of it um, yet. But I felt like it deserved a review because I feel like this rod is underrated. Um, now, I, I wanna say, and I could be wrong about this, that they basically kind of replaced this rod with the Ugly Stick Elites. So I had always assumed that they were kind of the same, but I don't actually have an Elite. So that's one that I'm probably gonna test in the future. Um, they're supposed to have a mix of graphite too, so it makes them a little bit lighter than the GX2s. Um, so in my mind, I always thought that they were kind of the same, but I don't think they are. And so I'm gonna review this, and sometimes I even mix them up in my mind and I. I'm sure in the comment section of some of these because it says, oh, it's Light Pro, but it looks kind of like Elite Pro. And so in my mind, I thought this was kind of the same thing. And I know in some of the comment section, other my, some of my other Ugly Stick videos, um, I might have said that I had an Elite and then this was the rod I was referring to because that's what I was thinking in my mind, but it's a different type of rod. Okay, so the rod looks good. It feels good because it's light. It's well balanced. This is a seven foot rod. Um, one of the things that I really love about this rod is just the general action on the rod. I'm not gonna give like a super wide angle view because I'd have to move my whole camera setup around, but this thing bends about equally throughout the entire rod. And I don't know what order I'm gonna be posting these videos in, but I do have a video coming out where I catch you know, a double digit size carp on this rod where you get to see the full bend of the rod. And it's like, you know, the carp was 10, 11, 12 pounds, something like that in a river, you know, so it had a little current to work with it to pull, you know, in its favor. And, you know, this rod was able to get the full bend in, but I mean, you never felt like you were in danger of losing the fish or the rod was in danger of breaking. Another A plus on this rod is the durability. Unfortunately, I break rods all the time. If it's not basically an ugly stick, I will find a way to break it. I just broke another one this summer. I 
can't even believe it. And again, I'll be posting on that soon. But again, this rod, it survived, um, survived my abuse. And a lot of times we, we do family camping and fishing videos. You'll see us do the, quite a few of those. And so this rod gets, it's a two piece rod. So, you know, it comes apart, but with our new SUV, I actually have a big, it's like a duffel bag. I'll show it someday on here, but I stuff rod after rod after rod for the whole family in there. So there's like eight or nine rods stuffed in there when this is down and then it gets stuffed into my car. And so my rods go through a lot of travel abuse. And then we're camping, we're outside these rods. Once I get them all rigged up for the whole family, it's not like I break them down and put them in the car each night. A lot of times they just sit out and if it rains, it rains and they take whatever kind of abuse it takes. My kids will have them, they'll drop them on the rocks, you know? I mean, this rod looks almost like brand new. Um, other than the cork is a little dirty because that's what happens when you have cork handles. Now the cork itself, I mean, well, there's a big chip out of it right there. You know, I mean, it's not ultra high quality or anything, but um, you know, it gets, it gets the job done. Um, I haven't had it really split and completely break out or anything. So this rod is fun to catch fish on. I mean, it's fun to use. It doesn't weigh very much. You know, it's not gonna break, you know? I mean, and so, but what I mostly use it for is this is my second kind of big rod that I'll fish stuff on the bottom. So I soak bait with it basically. And, uh, and it works excellent for that because the one down, well, before I get to that, one more thing that I really like. The, the inserts, it has like ceramic inserts and guides. These things, they, they don't look pretty, you know? I mean, they're just, they look okay, but they work. I mean, I haven't had them pop, trouble with them popping out like some people do. Um, they don't get grooves in them at all. I mean, they've just worked really well. So that's another thing. I mean, and, it, and like I said, it's well balanced. It's not too heavy. So that's, that's all good. The one thing that I don't like is these exposed threads here and the fact that this screws up from the bottom. Now, technically it's screwing up from the bottom isn't like really my big um, complaint because if it's done right, technically they can screw up from the the real seat can screw up from the bottom and the threads won't be exposed. There are ways to do that. So if somebody finds a way to do that, I'm cool with it. Even if they are exposed and I don't feel it on my hand, that's fine too. But I like to hold my rod down here. Actually on this one, I do actually end up holding it up here just because of the way that it's balanced. That's not the typical way. It doesn't really matter when I'm soaking bait, but if I do happen to be casting the lures, so every now and then I'll throw a frog with this. I'll end up holding up here a lot of times. My preference is to kind of have it like a trigger finger here. So that's when these threads get really annoying. So I absolutely hate this. Now, one of the things that I noticed is on the elites that are out, they fix this. So they have a little thing that screws down from the top. Now I haven't actually felt it, but you can just tell that it looks a lot better. I mean, not only looks better, it looks like it will feel better. And when eventually when I get one, I'll tell you about it. So this, it's probably my only complaint about this rod. Now, the one thing that it, it's just like a great all-purpose rod. Um, I, I prefer my all-purpose rods to be shorter, six to six and a half feet. This one's seven feet. So for me, that kind of works against it. it. I live in Iowa, you're fishing from the bank in the summertime. There's weeds everywhere, there's trees everywhere. You know, you get these big long rods like just caught in everything. You know, you kind of need something in that six to six and a half foot range. And this is just a little bit too long to be casting and retrieving, casting and retrieving. To chuck bait out there once and let it sit, it's fine. It's even better because you can cast it longer distance. Now I actually, when I bought this rod, I bought it as a combo, I remember. And I want to say it costs like uh, 50 bucks, 60 bucks right in there. I think it was like $10 more than like whatever a GX2 would have been. Um, and the reel that came with it, I don't think I've ever used it. I have it somewhere still. It's probably okay. It seemed cheaper to me than the G the ones that come with the GX2s. Um, it just seemed a little more flimsy. So I usually put like a Pen Fierce 2 bait runner on here when I'm soaking bait. 
and that complements this rod really well and you can do almost anything with it um, from I would say a small fish up to a large fish so like micros little sunnies and stuff like that creek chubs you can catch them on here okay but it's not really all that much fun you know um and you probably want an ultra light rod for that and this is a medium now on the other end if you're going out for flatheads or it's not even so much the size of the fish that matters it's how much weight you need to throw this rod is kind of noodly you know so you're not going to be able to cast i would i wouldn't feel comfortable casting more than like three ounces with this rod um very far now if you just need to kind of plop it in the river you'll probably be okay and it's not going to break it's just it's going to be really flexy when you're trying to even when i carp fished with it it was kind of maxing it out with like a with the method lead and everything with all the bait on it you know the tip was kind of hanging down and you could just kind of toss it out there a little ways and that was just about perfect but heavyweight if you're in a river you need to load this down with like eight ounces of lead this is not the rod you need something this stiffer it's not going to work for you also, if you're pulling a heavy crankbait, and this goes the same for every ugly stick rod, since they're made out of fiberglass or the tips are made out of fiberglass, it's just so flexy that it just doesn't pull like big crankbaits well or big, big baits of any kind. I mean, you wouldn't want to throw like a big pike bait, you know, or even a small musky bait. They're just going to be too big for this rod. So on the really high end, it doesn't work so great. On the really low end, it doesn't work so great. Everything else in the middle, I mean, this is a great all-purpose setup um, if you get like a bait feeder like that pen feeder, which I've already done um, a review on. So if you find one on eBay, if you're, you know, if you're at a rummage sale or whatever and you see one, you know, which you probably will because I imagine these things will last forever, um, definitely worth, worth picking up. I, I would really enjoy it and I'm kind of struggling to find I want to get a newer version. What I really want, if, if I could just get a different handle on here, I think it would, or a different reel seat, this would be, you know, exactly what I wanted. So I'm probably going to try out one of those elites and see how it compares to this. From what I've read, most people like these older ones better. And I can see why. It's hard to, they don't do too many things poorly except for this little thing here and if you're just letting them soak like i do most of the time this doesn't matter too much you just cast it one time it's like laying there or you're fighting a fish so there you go that's my that's my review even though they it might be kind of hard to find of the uh shakespeare ugly stick pro light graphite seven foot medium two-piece um fishing rod um, so yeah, like an A minus and depending on what you want to do, it, it'll probably work for most things, but maybe not all of them. All right. Thanks for watching Team Kramer Fishing. I have a bunch more reviews coming up of stuff I've been using like the past two or three years that I've been really putting through the paces before I do a review of how they actually work. Um, my experience actually using them. So stay tuned. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, I have a, several more rod and reel reviews coming up. Thanks for watching.